whoever you are or wherever you are in life's journey, you're welcome here. If you came tired and weary, you have an hour of rest. If you came full of joy, you have an hour of praise. If you came full of sorrow and woe, we will hold you close to God. We are a church that is growing and thriving, and you will notice children and youth in our service. We love the noise of children. Crying and laughter and crawling and talking to parents is welcomed. So the noise does not bother us because we are a thriving and growing church. Today uh, is still in the season of Easter. This is my teaching moment for you. So we still have the white pyramid, and we also have our Easter banners. I changed my stole today because we had a life celebration for Meg's self here yesterday, and this is one of her stoles. And her sons gave all her stoles to me. Uh, we'll use some in our church. The rest we will send to our conference. For young ministers that are just starting in their parishes don't often have money to purchase stoles. This one's handmade, but usually they cost $280 to $400. So we will send the extra ones that we're not using, and the new students can use them in honor of Meg's self. So her favorite flower was purple irises, and so I'm wearing this in honor of Meg today. Our prelude this morning... Our two uh, students of Dara, Dr. Hollinger's, Ella Hitchcock and Lewis Hitchcock, and you can see uh, the songs they're going to be playing in your bulletin. So let us prepare our hearts for worship and enjoy these pieces. <laughs> Oh. 
Our call to worship this morning is based on Psalm 1. It is a reading of how staying close to God gives us nourishment. Please stand if you like and join me in the responsive call to worship as I begin. Come, quench your thirst in the love of God. We become hungry for a place in which we can be gently nourished. Be like trees planted by the streams of living water, ready to receive God's nourishment. Strengthen us, O God, to receive your blessed peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Please join me in the unison prayer. Love you, God. We praise you for your mercy and care for us. Fill us now with your sweet spirit, so we may rejoice in your grace. May we turn to you for wisdom and strength. Amen. Our gathering hymn is What a Friend We Have in Jesus, found on page 506 in your hymnal. Join me in the unison prayer of forgiveness in your bulletin. 
Merciful God, we come to you with open hearts, ready to seek you daily. Forgive us when we allow other things to become more of a priority than our time with you. Teach us to seek your presence in every moment. Amen. Let us be in silence. Amen. Amen. Hear the assurance of God's grace. Jesus said, I have come that you might have abundant life. With God, all things are possible. In this we can rejoice. I invite you to stand and sing our song of response. Hallelujah. <coughs> Stand around the organ so you can over watch what, what's happening. Somebody can come over here. Squeeze through there. Look at all those buttons. You gotta go watch it. Look at all those that light up. That's why she's doing it.
a class now for your teachers. Thanks so much. Oh.
Our gospel lesson is from the book of John, chapter 17. And this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. I have made God's name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from me. For the words that you gave to me, which I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave to me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I'm coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so send I, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. So that's a lot of words. A lot of in them and I and you and I and me. And uh, it's a, a little bit of a tough passage, I think, if it's taken out of context. I want to remind us that the Gospel of John is for what we call theocentric, God-centered. The author of the Gospel of John wanted all the readers to know, whomever he was writing to, that Jesus and God and the Spirit were one, and that Jesus was nothing outside of God. So this is reflected over and over in the scriptures we read. In our passage today, Jesus is praying to God on behalf of the disciples. Some, will, some say this is called a farewell discourse. Scholars have described it as that because he's giving them uh, knowledge of what's going to happen in the future. But it sounds to me like a person really in love and frustration and begging God to protect the loved disciples. It reminds me of a parent who has a wayward child and is just saying, God, Please, can't you do something? I taught them everything. I gave them the word. They know the word. I took them to church. But they're still misbehaving. And so Jesus is pleading on behalf. He says, they have all the tools. I gave them everything. Well, don't take them out of the world. Leave them in the world, but protect them from the evil one. What a great prayer. What a great prayer this is. So the church is not an orphan in the world, actually. Christ is with us. But sometimes we are so beleaguered and so despaired with the hatred and the violence that is going on that we feel a bit orphaned. We might be saying, God, fix it. Fix the wars. Fix the politicians. You know, do something. And I can kind of hear Jesus saying, well, don't take them out of the world. They're in the world. They know what to do. It's like this reassurance for those who are listening that God is with us and Christ is in us. You know, we take our prayers and our prayerful spirits into the world, which is often hostile, and yet it's such a need of God's love. So I'm remembering um, this phrase over about 20 years ago. Our son, our 20-year, six-year-old son had just died, and that following year I went to Germany to sing with a choir. And in the choir was another man who had just lost his 26-year-old son. So within six months, our sons both died. <laughs> And on the trip, we went to visit a museum that had the Pieta. And I tried to find a picture this morning, but I couldn't find a nice one to show you. But the Pieta is a sculpture originally by Michelangelo 
of the mother Mary holding the body of Jesus, that when the body was taken off the cross, they handed her Jesus' body. And it's a picture of her holding him. And, and, and that's what the sculpture is. So this was a replica, of course, of Michelangelo's, the real Pietas in the Vatican, which I haven't been able to see. And so it so happened that I was standing there, and this was very raw for me, because my son had just died. And here's Mary holding her son, and the tears are streaming down my eyes. And my friend Chuck comes up and stands beside me, who also son had just died. And he's crying. And I said to him, does it ever get any better? He said, you know, I, I think maybe. He said, there hasn't been a day I haven't cried a lot. I said, me neither. And so then he looked at this and he said, but you know, he, he was a, actually a seminary professor and I had taken class where he said, the Bible tells us that Jesus prays on our behalf. Maybe he is praying for us now because he knows our loss. Maybe, he said, Mary is praying for us now because she knows our loss. And in that moment, not only was I connected to Chuck, but I was connected to every parent everywhere who has lost a child, either to death or to addiction or to restrained relationships. At that moment, I was connected to the power of God and Jesus. And this passage this week, it kept pulling that story to me. I thought, that isn't a great story to tell on this Sunday, but it wouldn't let me alone. Because I think what it says is that God is with us every moment, and Jesus is interceding on our behalf. This morning I had a little frustrating situation with a family member, and I thought, you know, what I need now is somebody to intercede on my behalf. Then I remembered that's exactly what I'm preaching on. So I said, Jesus, go to it. Get to work. You've got work to do because I cannot handle this on my own. I need you to intercede on my behalf. So we might say, well, where is the good news in this? I always find good news in the passage. Part of the good news is that Jesus is with us, interceding on our behalf. The other part of the good news is that, you know, once we commit to loving God and loving others, we cannot sit silent for the hostilities of the world and for the things that are happening. We have to be the change that comes about for this vitriolic behavior that's going on. We have to dismantle those systems that are continuing to give people without homes and without food. So it isn't just about praying and doing a help me God. It's also taking those prayers and putting them in our hands and our feet and our hearts and making vital changes for the world. It is not easy to do when we're so fraught with our own troubles. There are some days I think, I've got enough on my plate, God. Could you just handle more all we're on your own? But that isn't how it works. Jesus says in the passage, he said, I am in you and you're in me. I gave them the word. They have it. So it, for me, it was kind of like this assurance that, yep, I'm equipped. We're all equipped to go out in the world and be the love and the strength and the power that this world needs. The other thing Jesus said, I have received love and I'm caring for you the same way. Oof, how marvelous is that? You know, for Jesus to say, I mean, he's God's son, and to say, I've given all this love, and now I love you just the same way. I mean, that's a powerful love. Mm -hmm. When we're feeling down and burdened and like nobody loves us, I don't feel that way because I get a lot of love, but some people don't have a lot of people to love them. We want to remind them that God is love. Some of you read my Caring Bridge this week that when I first had my first bout with cancer, I made up my mind that I was going to tell people I love you as much as possible because I never knew if I was going to get another opportunity to do it. And then this second bout with cancer kind of anted it up a little more, and I thought, well, I could love strangers too. I better start doing that. <laughs> so I've made a practice to tell people that I love them. Sometimes people look at me a little funny, you know, when you're paying the bills. I love you. God loves you. You know, and they're like, who's this strange woman? I don't care. I don't care. I've made a vow. I'm going to tell people that I love them because I have a feeling that just like Jesus said, God loves me and I'm caring for you the same way. That's what I'm going to do. God loves me and I'm caring for you the same way. And that caring doesn't go only with words. Then it means listening and it means caring. It means money out of my pocketbook. And so I think about these things as I am reminded that Jesus showed us the way. 
We have a powerful force within us and with our, within our Christian community in prayer. And sometimes, uh, I don't know how much you pray at home, but we pray a lot here corporately. And we pray in our community. We have our meetings. Almost every meeting in our church begins and ends with prayer. And those are marvelous times. I think in the beginning, it opens us up. We take a moment, hopefully you do this in the silence, you say, God, what is it that I need to change? What must I give, to, give attention to this week? And then we wait in the silence for God to tell us and show us. The other thing that Jesus is doing here is what is called intercessory prayer. That means that you're praying for somebody else. I love that. I can do that all day long. And when I can't sleep at night, that's what I do. So many of you get to hear, God gets to hear your voice in the middle of the night. And I say, God, I can't sleep. But, you know, bring people to my mind that need your love and need comfort right now. And the names just start to roll. And if I can't think of the names, I just pull my directory out and go with it. I thought the other day if we had phone books, I could pull a phone book out. Wouldn't that be interesting to see what God would do with that? Like, you don't even know those people, Bonnie. But, well, it's okay. But intercessory prayer, we believe that there's power in that. I preached a sermon one Sunday called Prayer Changes Us. I'm not sure how much it changes God, but it changes us. It puts us in this place of listening and openness to the Holy Spirit to be receiving God's great love. So as we think of this wonderful, wonderful prayer, that Jesus gave to his disciples to say, I'm praying for you, you are equipped, go for it. And then there's another phrase, I love the best, so that they may have the full measure of joy within them. Whew. Isn't that great? I mean, that's the whole point. It's not to be sad and dour and be some uptight Christian. No, it's to be full of joy and say to people, oh, I love you, I care about you. Yes, God is with us. And yes, the world has a tough time, but we're going to change it. We're not going to be down in the mouth about what's happening when we have the power of prayer and love right within us. Let us pray. Come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you sweet rest. And I will give you sweet rest. Amen. Amen. I think we have a hymn. Five. Five oh five. Five oh five. I invite you to stand and we'll sing sweet hour of prayer.
may be seated. We are privileged each week to come to a time of prayer. Let us open our hearts and receive God's blessings. Holy One, we are indeed grateful for your amazing love that you heal us and touch us, inspire us and challenge us. This morning, we do need to intercede on the behalf of those who are sick. We pray for Marcy, for Carl, for Carol, for Katie, for Tom, Dodie, Tabitha, Laura, Terry, Daniel, Shirley, Gail, and Reverend Marty. God, we know that medicine and doctors can do a lot, but your healing love is far more powerful. Let us continue to support those who are sick with our visits, our calls, our cards, and meals. Encourage them that they may not feel they're sick alone, but that we are by their side. God, we've had a lot of deaths in our parish recently, and personally, I'm tired of doing life celebrations. I just pray that we might have a little break here, but we know that the families are still grieving, even though they might be celebrating because their loved one is with Jesus eternally. We know that there can be a lot of pain and a lot of adjustment when someone has died. So we pray for the family of Tara, the family of Meg, Carol's family, Hillary's family, Dell's family, Lloyd's family. God, there are people who have died in our community also, and it affects neighbors and friends and children and grandchildren. So we ask for your mercy to come and cover us and cover them. Let us be the comfort that they might need at this time. We thank you for those lives that have given much to you and given examples <coughs> to us. We pray, too, for our children and our families this day. We know that there are many who celebrate Mother's Day, and it is a joyful thing for so many. So we pray for mothers for whom parenting is a joy. We pray for mothers for whom parenting is filled with sorrow. We pray for those who wish to be mothers but cannot. We pray for those who had to give up their children or whose children have died. We know that you are a mothering God, and you can come and fill us with compassion. And this day, we ask for <coughs> reconciliation between <coughs> families, between all parents and all children. And that reconciliation begins at home and then spreads out into our world. So we pray for our countries, our nations, our earth. We pray that there might be a ceasefire, that the war might end altogether. We pray that we might find ways to stop the wars. We pray also for those who this day have no place to sleep and no food. Thank you for our ministries and our outreach here. And may you send people to us whom we need and whom need us, that we may serve one another. Thank you for our youth today that are so willing to give their gifts to you. May we as adults take an example from them and stop shying away and saying, I'm too old or I don't have a gift. Let us learn from our children to give freely of our gifts. We praise you and thank you for Jesus who showed us the way. And we pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Let us not fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Uh, and now we're going to have a mission moment by Harry Shin. <coughs> Wow, is this new? This 
big step there? Oh. <laughs> I'm really tall. <laughs> um, well, you know, Pastor Bonnie just told us that we can go out and change the world, and I'm here to give you an opportunity to do just that. So, uh, this is one of our uh, special offerings that we do throughout the year. There are four of them. And it's a, a commitment we make to the UCC and to our conference to uh, collect special uh, uh, collection for special needs that arise. So this particular one is called the Strength in the Church Offering. You'll find uh, an insert in your bulletin that talks about one church that benefited from Strength in the Church from a grant from this particular offering. And also you'll find an, an envelope if you'd like to put a little, a little uh, contribution in there. It would be really appreciated. Um, I'm going to read a little uh, thing written by the Reverend Karen Georgia Thompson called On Holy Ground. It talks a little bit about this offering. God calls us into community. God desires for us to be a big, inclusive expansive, welcoming community. That sure describes our church, doesn't it? <laughs> One where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome. I call this a big tent community. God wants our congregations and our whole Christian movement to be a big tent where all can be generously welcomed. The Strength in the Church offering supports congregations and initiatives that help us live into the UCC's Big Tent vision. Funds raised support leadership development, new churches, youth ministry, and renewal initiatives in existing congregations. Your conference and the national ministries work together to use these funds for projects that matter now and for the future of our movement. Through this offer, offering, we further our commitment to being a multiracial, multicultural church that is accessible to all. Will you join people across the UCC in making a gift to strengthen the church? Together, we can be the big tent that God calls us to be. Thank you. <coughs> Friends, just as prayer is action, so is giving. We now have the opportunity to take our prayers and turn them into meaningful gifts of love. Give with joy. You may place your connection cards in the offering place at this time. Will the ushers please come forward?
join me in dedicating our gifts to God and others in the unison prayer. Generous <coughs> God, take our offerings and use them to heal our world. Take our lives and cause them to be channels of peace. Use our hands and feet to serve and feed the hungry. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who shows us the way. Amen. Our sending him, <coughs> Lord, dismiss us with your blessing, found on page 77 of your hymnal. check to FCCM and put campership in the memo. You may go online to engage and put um, miscellaneous and then put campership there. You can also make your strengthen the church offering on engage. Now for those of you who already have an engage account set up, if you go on to engage and you forget your password, please do not make a new account. Some of you have six to ten accounts. <laughs> so that means that I have to clean it up. And uh, it takes a little while. So if you forget your password, you just say, forgot password, then you'll get an email and then I can open up. If all else fails, call me and I'll walk you through it. So, but it is a wonderful tool uh, when you're home thinking about something, oh, I can give online. So you use your credit card for other funky stuff. You can use it for this. So um, also, we need to have people help out with the reception for Reverend Lloyd Schneider's life celebration on May 25th. Vicki Onita is going to have up for us, but she needs a lot of help. There's a sign-up sheet. So we want to have more than just cookies and punch for Reverend Schneider. He was uh, a longtime pastor, and uh, you will discover when you come to his service also the impact that he made in the communities in which he lived. He was uh, indeed a great selfless man. His wife has uh, dementia, and this is very difficult for the family. So Reverend Liz Armstrong will be officiating that service. I'll be here, but she's going to be leading it. So if you can help bring tea sandwiches or fruit or whatever Vicki has on that sheet back there, sign up. So we'll need it for about 100 people, I think. So we appreciate that. Don't forget to also sign up for regular hospitality hour as well. May 25th, we're having a new member class and luncheon. 
If you are at all interested in finding out about our church or joining, uh, we invite you to come. Many of you have already received an invitation from me. If you're a current member and you have never gone through a new member class, you are welcome as well. Just let me know ahead of time. If you are a member and would like to sponsor someone, please call me. I still need two sponsors. Uh, Marcy Dugan, our sweet member who sings, is in the hospital with a respiratory problem. She asked for continued prayers for her. So uh, she did say we could make that announcement. Don't forget, Reverend Marty is still undergoing chemo. It has been difficult. So any encouragement through cards at this time, visits are not appropriate. But uh, we do want to send her cards. And Parish Care will check in with her while I'm on vacation. So I leave for vacation Tuesday morning. I get back Wednesday sometime. I can't remember the schedule just now. So uh, if you have pastoral care needs, call the office and Jenny will put you in touch with Parish Care. Uh, Reverend Mickey and Reverend Penny will be doing the service next Sunday. So what a delight that is. And I'm going to be visiting my daughter in North Carolina. So it's going to be a good time. Um, let us stand now and sing our benediction song. Peace serving others.